Hey, what's up, folks? I made a thing. It's it's a stupid thing. It's not a thing I recommend, but I did make a thing. So I thought I would share it with you and just put the code on GitHub. It's really not very complicated, and it's not super interesting. But if I had to make this thing, you might have to make this thing at some point too, so maybe it'll help you out. I made a thing called the Time Machine. I know. I know. It's not a very good title. And the uh, favicon for it is very explicitly not a TARDIS because that would be like a Doctor Who copyright thing. It is instead a blue British phone booth that can travel through time, which is not a TARDIS. So that's what that is. All the time machine is, is a whole bunch of years. I have 17 now. I think I've got three more to go. We'll have 20 different years and that'll be all we have that we can do anything with at the moment. So you pick your year, you've got this nice slider and you can say, looky here, stadium, no stadium, stadium, no stadium, stadium, no stadium. And that's the time machine. That's what that does. So how I made this was with Mapbox GLJS. And really, there's two reasons why I did that. I started out with Leaflet and that was working fine, but there's two issues I had. One is I wanted to be able to zoom in past the natural end of where those tiles are. These tiles I'm doing to uh, one meter, which translates to about zoom level 17. So at Leaflet, that's where it stopped, and I want to be able to crank in past that. And I don't care if it pixelates a little, because you can still make out stuff. And uh, there was, there's not a good way to do that in the leaflet in map.gl.js. It's fairly straightforward. You just set your source to start and end at particular tile uh, places. And then your uh, layer definition, you can have it go uh, zoomed in or out past those levels. It'll just keep using that same tile. And that's how the vector tile aspect of it works, because you don't need to have vector tiles past a certain zoom level because they're not going to give you anything different. It works the same way with the raster tiling. That lets me zoom in a little closer. The other reason is this Mapbox GLJS compare thing was exactly what I needed, and it's super spiffy. So what the hell? I'm using Mapbox GLJS. But you could do this in Leaflet. You could argue that Leaflet is probably, for a, a raster-only tile thing, a better solution. Certainly a lot more lightweight. But for those two reasons, I went with Mapbox GLJS. Each one of these sides is a whole map. They're just sitting on top of each other. And the swipe bar essentially just, just uh, this right map is on top of this left map. And the swipe bar is just changing the boundary between those two things. That's all that's doing. So you can pick different years, go to the years. You can also do it with these little arrow buttons. You so choose and just see how things are shaking out in the Mecklenburg County area. That's it, that's Time Machine. There's only two other, well, three other okay aspects to it. The search, I took Mapbox GLJS's search and uh, forked it and made it just work with Mecklenburg's API. Because it was, the way GLJS search is set up, you can add another search, uh, API source, but it's only in addition to the Mapbox GLJS API uh, source uh, with with their service, which means their stuff always comes out on top, and we like our search stuff a little better. So I just forked it so I could just use our search stuff and not the uh, Mapbox geocoding service. So now I can go find a roof. Go over there and see where that is. Interesting problem with this kind of map uh, is if you put a marker down, these are actually two different maps. So how are you going to manage that? So I just don't marker. I just I just zoom in. So the search is a little different. I added some uh, basic image manipulation controls so you can futz around with contrast and hue rotate and Change the brightness. 
uh, I, I I do this and I act like I like no uh, remote sensing. Look, I would do this for my remote sensing needs for a pixel saturated tree. Ca I, I, I don't know. I don't know why you want to do that, but you can. So I added it and I added this little button, which just downloads the canvas as an image. And there's got to be one for each map because they're two separate maps. So you click on that, it'll ask you where to save it. And then you can pull it up and it indeed looks like your map. That is the entire thing. There is not much code involved. The whole thing to set it up, you can't read that. The whole JavaScript setup is here. And I'm using Vue. Uh, at first I started doing this without Vue because it just seemed silly to use a, a responsive component framework for something this stupid. But uh, these little time indicators are kind of a pain in the ass without Vue because you've got your value here that can change. You gotta go forward and backward. If you go uh, past the end where there's no more, you gotta take that arrow away and disable it. In just plain JavaScript, that's a whole lot of pain in the ass spaghetti code. So it's a view component. That's view component. And the map is a view component just because once I'm using view at that point, why not? That's pretty straightforward. It just sets up the components here and the map, uh, not a whole lot to say. The when you change the effects, it affects the uh, this shared state objects different values, and then that tells it to refresh the map. Uh, here's our left before map and after map, and not a whole lot else to say beyond that. Yeah, I don't think that I have a whole lot else to say here. It, it loads an empty map style sheet, which uh, if you didn't know that you can do. An empty map style sheet, you just need this minimum number of stuff in it. A version, a sources, a object, and a layers array. And that's it. So it's an empty thing. And then when it loads, it's pulling the year information from uh, just this little thing over here. And where I have all the year and years and the ZXY path and the min zoom and the max zoom. And that's it. And years is just the keys of that. And I, I, I do that just because lazy. And that's the whole thing. If I were to make this for another municipality, I would change the year URLs. And I would change the search control, maybe just a Mapbox GLJS's default search control that goes to their API. And where the map is initiated, or the components are initiated, uh, just change the map default center and zoom. And then it, you'd be at a whole new municipality and everything should just work trademark probably. That's it. Not a whole lot of... Uh, actual dependencies in this. There's the GL geocoder, which I forked over to my own repository and Babel plugin transform runtime, just because I wanted to use some Babel function. And for this thing, this thing's so stupid. I was like, uh, you know, I just don't care how big and bloated this thing gets. So I just throw that whole thing in there. Uh, file saver for easy downloading, GL and GL compare, normalize and uh, view and that's that is the whole kit and caboodle really only the uh, the only interesting part of this project was the converting 17 years of aerials it'll be 20 by the time I'm done uh, it's just a whole lot of goodle and oh god what a mess it was like every single year it was I don't know if it was a different vendor or just different the same vendor had you know just different flares because we have tiffs we have ecws we have mr sids oh suck it mr sid that's all i have to say about that format and we have jpegs we have stuff that's uh, projected and it knows that what projection it is 
We have stuff that's projected and it doesn't know what projection it's in. We have stuff that's projected that thought it was in one projection, but it's really in a different projection. Uh, we, it's just, it's, what a shit show. But all it is is just Google command and then come back the next day and see how it works. And it's either Eureka or it's uh, a blob of crap and you start again. And you just got to be patient and just try to do a couple a week and, and you can get through them. I'll put in uh, in the blog post, whenever I do these YouTube videos, I also usually have a blog post with it where I'll put some code snippets and stuff if it's appropriate. I'll put some of my Google commands. Basically, sometimes I have to do a, a, a GDAL build vert to build a virtual thing when I have a whole bunch of tiles, uh, images. I usually just... I usually didn't have just one mosaic image. Um, second thing I have to do is GDAL warp because none of this was in uh, the one true projection, 3857 Lubricator. So GDAL warp either a single image mosaic file or the virtual file. Um, but after after I GDAL warp, I do a GDAL translate to put in MD tiles, MB tiles, pardon. And then a Geodula Dado or whatever the hell to build the overviews for that uh, uh, MB tiles file to get it out to different zoom levels. Interesting, there's no way to specify the zoom levels you want uh, into the MB tiles either with the overviews or with the initial creation. What I found is that a one meter pixel resolution, it gets about zoom level 17. Then if you do the build the overviews with 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, hell if I know what any of that means, it gets all the way back to zoom level 8, I believe, which was plenty for what I needed. So I'll put some of those commands I ran in the blog post. And hopefully you will find that helpful. And again, this is just kind of a stupid, silly thing I built. But sometimes you have to build stupid, silly things too. So feel free to use this code and I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.